truly may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all this day. Please join me in our responsive call to worship. You'll find it in the one-page sheets today, as we are not able to produce uh, the normal bulletin. Behold, how manifold are God's works. God has made them all in wisdom. The earth is God's and everything in it. Let all of creation praise God's awesome deeds. Let us worship God. Let us pray. Dear God, as we gather together, we are thankful for your creation, for light and darkness, for air, for wind and sky, for earth and sea, for seeds, for harvests and for plant life, for sunlight, for moonlight, and indeed starlight, for every living creature, swarming, flying, creeping, and grazing. And we give you thanks today for our lives. In our actions and meditations and prayers, May we honor and celebrate your very good creation as we seek wisdom on how to share our gratitude and love in good and in healing ways. <laughs> Creator God, we come before you in a time of crisis, though. We know that much of your creation is struggling. We begin to see and acknowledge the changes around us we search for the causes and the cures and the collaborative ways we can commit to, to care for creation. We want to do what is right, but we don't always know what is right. Or we do not always agree how best to do it. Help us to learn what we must listening to the diverse voices of creation itself. Help us to understand and love what you have loved and called very good. Enliven that understanding, we ask, to allow ourselves to be moved to act as we should and to halt actions that harm. Guide us as we try to discern how best to truly listen to each other as well as your creation. Guide us as we try to discern how to heed your call. We ask for forgiveness where we have taken too much or cared too little, for hearts willing to listen and change and the will to follow through. And may the knowledge of your presence and the assurance of your love shape our time here in this place, but indeed always. We pray all of these things in your name, and the prayer your Son teaches us to pray, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Good morning and happy Earth Day. Benvenue l'Église de Saint Andrew et Saint Paul. Nous sommes ravis que vous soyez ici. Truly, we are delighted to have so many people here with us this morning. So, as you have discovered, our printer went on the blink last Friday. And so, accordingly, you have your one sheet for our bulletins today. No, this was not an action of the green team, although I do find it quite interesting that it happened in connection with our, our green Sunday. 
So we ask if, if you have uh, problems, you can see that the, the hymns are on the, the boards um, and you can use, we, we invite you to use your hymnals. It's good to get those things out of, the, out of their little brackets. So regarding announcements, first of all, after the service, um, we're going to invite you each to get a little bag. We'll explain more about that. In the bag, there'll be a little pot and some seeds. Um, but in addition to doing that, please help yourself and join us for coffee and fellowship, which will be hosted by our Green Church Committee. Next Sunday will be our Taste of the Nations, our Heritage Sunday, which is one of the favorite favorite Sundays of the year with the flags being paraded in and then afterwards just the most amazing food that reflects the heritage of so many diverse cultures that gather within our sacred space here at the Church of St. Andrew and St. Paul. This Tuesday at six o'clock we will have our French table. If you are trying to learn French or if you are kind enough to help teach some French, Please come by, there'll be a very simple meal and it'll be just a lovely time, very relaxed as you have people help you learn to roll your R's or to conjugate verbs. The pause for prayer that is usually on Tuesdays will be canceled for this week because I am traveling. And then finally, uh, Betty Jo wants me to make sure that you all know that on the 8th of May will be the Guild Annual um, the AGM with a beautiful spring luncheon um, that will be obviously at noon that day and we will have our very own Jonas who will not only talk about his work as the music director here at the Church of St. Andrew and St. Paul but he will play for us all so please get your reservations in for that wonderful event and with that let us continue to worship God.
This is Genesis 2, verses 4 through 9 and 15. Listen now for God's word. In the day that the Lord made the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field was yet on earth, and no vegetation of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground, but a stream would rise up from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man from dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground the Lord God made it grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The Lord God took this man and put him in the garden of Eden to till and keep it. This has been the Lord of the, God, the word of God. The Gospel reading is taken from Matthew 13, verses 1 to 7, the parable of the sower. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, 
listen. A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on a path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. If you have ears, hear. Then the disciples came and asked him, Why do you speak to them in parables? He answered, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For to those who have more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. The reason I speak to them in parables is that seeing they do not perceive and hearing they do not listen, nor do they understand. With them indeed is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah that says, you will indeed listen, but never understand, and you will indeed look, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and their ears are hard of hearing, and they have shut their eyes so that they might not look with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and turn, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Truly, I tell you, many prophets and righteous people longed to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this point and moment in our service, you are invited to consider the multiple ways that you can give to the life, the work, and the ministry of our community, and indeed the wider church especially today for the love and the sake of creation. This is Earth Day Sunday. Your offerings will now be received.
Let us pray. Holy and loving God, God of divine mystery, on this Earth Day Sunday, as we experience spring, you show us once again your power to bring new life from the slumber of winter. And we give thanks for the diversity and the wonder of this very vulnerable planet, this planet which is our home, the land, the air, and the oceans, all living things that form the rich tapestry of life that you have woven. And we pray for people whose lives and homelands are threatened by the exploitation of your creation. We pray for those who struggle to survive without clean water and with the growing scarcity of traditional resources that have sustained them and their families through the ages. We pray for the leaders of governments and industries throughout our world. May they be given the vision and the commitment to protect our planet and the well-being of all peoples and this biosphere. We pray especially for indigenous peoples and those involved in environmental movements throughout the world who alert us to the consequences of not caring for the earth and who challenge us to tread more lightly in God's creation. We pray that the efforts of so many may move us toward a sustainable and just global community where all share equally in the bounty of your creation. We are here as your children, as inhabitants of one earth. Help us then to work together to deepen our love, to respect and be responsible for your world so that no one may suffer from our abuse of your sacred creation. Give us courage then to go out into this world to meet those challenges, confident in your love for us and trusting in your holy presence to guide and to sustain us. We offer these prayers in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our risen Lord.
in the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, the Sustainer. En nom du Père, du Fils et du Saint-Esprit. Amen. Priez avec moi, s'il vous plaît. Viez agréer mes paroles et la méditation de nos cœurs, ô Éternel, mon rocher, mon libérateur. Amen. Tomorrow is Earth Day. Well over half a century ago, early environmentalists started calling attention to the harm caused by a mindset of exploiting natural resources with no thought to the consequences. A mindset of a disposable economy, punctuated by concepts of designed obsolescence, the idea that you could deliberately shorten the lifespan of a product to force people to purchase functional replacements. The wonders of the modern world, for example, pesticides, also the increased harvests also poisoned our waters. Industrial progress also led to irresponsible dumping, and we literally had rivers catch on fire. Into that environmental crisis of the 1960s and 70s, a group of activists set aside one spring day to focus our attention on the welfare of our planet. We started hearing phrases like reduce, reuse, recycle. In recent years, that mantra has changed to reduce, reuse, repair, refuse, repurpose, and rethink. That concept of recycling has really fallen out of favor uh, because we can no longer recycle all the trash we produce. Far better if we simply not produce the trash in the first place. But over time, our environmental concerns have shifted and we now face even greater challenges as our planet cries out in pain of record-breaking wildfires, floods, heat waves, droughts, hurricanes that have become the basic drumbeat of the climate crisis. Many of us feel the despair, the lament, that has now been termed as echo grief. As we heard Emma read this morning from Genesis, God made human beings to care for the earth. God placed human beings in a garden to till it and to keep it. In the story of Genesis, we like to think that people might be the best of God's creation. I mean, after all, God created the stars and the plants and the animals, and God declared all of that good. But when God created humanity, God was quite pleased with the work accomplished and pronounced it very good. So perhaps we are entitled to think that we might be God's favorites. But privilege, but with that privilege comes a responsibility. And however privileged we might be, I want to suggest that perhaps we still might have some things to learn. The best-selling author, Robin Wall Kimmerer, is a professor of environmental biology. Her books, are framed both from her indigenous spirituality as well as her work as a scientist. In her best-selling book, Braiding Sweetgrass, she writes as follows. In the Western tradition, there is a recognized hierarchy of beings with, of course, human beings at the top, the pinnacle of evolution, the darling of creation, and plants are at the bottom. But native ways of knowing humans, people, are often referred to as the younger brothers of creation. 
They say that humans have the least experience with how to live, and thus we have the most to learn. We must look to our teachers among the other species for guidance. Their wisdom is apparent in the way that they live. They teach us by example. They've been on the earth far longer than we have, and they have had time to figure things out. So I've been thinking about what plants might have to teach us. Certainly, according to Genesis, humans are to be about the work of helping plants by cultivating other species who not only share our planet, but make it beautiful and also sustain us by providing food and shade and housing and clothing and, well, well, everything. But what lessons are we to learn from our leafy friends? So this brings us to today's gospel reading about the parable of the sower. In Jesus' parable of the sower, our farmer sounds rather, well, he sounds rather inept. This poor fellow is, has his seeds just going everywhere onto the path and eaten by birds, onto the rocks where the seeds have little chance of taking roots, among the weeds where they will never thrive. Only the good soil bears good harvest. But our sower is not stingy. The sower knows that not all of his efforts are going to produce a harvest. And I think that's the point. He tries anyway. He scatters the seed anyway. And then he trusts that some of the seeds, if just given a chance, will bear fruit. He trusts that if he does his human task of scattering the seeds, then in God's hands, God will do God's work, and that will be enough. Now, the great thing about parables is that they can teach us many lessons. I think a possible takeaway lesson for today with this parable is that we try. When it comes to the current climate crisis, we simply cannot give up. We need to rethink our strategy that demands that we have considered all possibilities, analyzed the problem from all angles, perhaps slept on it, and then carefully chosen the single best approach because we certainly don't want to waste our time on something that might not work. That is not the lesson of the parable of the sower. The sower throws caution and the seeds to the wind. The sower tries, and so we learn that the sower is more than rewarded in these efforts. In fact, that some of the seeds feed the birds and some don't succeed, quite simply, isn't important. What is important is that he got busy and he did what he could, where he could, with what he had. Now, congregations throughout North America often talk about being Matthew 25 churches. Matthew 25 tells a story about a king who comes and separates the sheep from the goats. The sheep stay with the king and the goats are sent away. Neither the sheep nor the goats know what they have done to deserve their fate. In fact, this is quite honestly a story of bewildered livestock. We learn that the sheep, the sheep have fed the hungry, have welcomed the stranger, have clothed the naked. And we learn that the goats did nothing bad Rather, the goats did nothing at all. My belle fille, I adore the French expression for a stepdaughter, my beautiful daughter. My belle fille is Dr. Ellie Good, who is a plant scientist and a professor of botany at St. Mary's University in Halifax. Her current research 
is on wetlands reclamation. And this young woman is working to save our planet one bog at a time. I discussed with her this sense of echo grief as we watched the cascade of one climate catastrophe after the next in my lament. She assured me that there is in fact reason for hope, but that we all have to keep doing the little things. Little things like turning off lights, doing away with single-use plastics, embracing public transportation. The little things. Reduce, reuse, repair, refuse, repurpose, rethink. The small efforts made by each one of us to live into the calling, our calling, God's calling on our lives to care for the planet, each one of those small acts buy us time. And in that precious time, our scientists can help us find solutions. Over the past year, our Green Church has been exploring and implementing measures to reduce our carbon footprint here at the Church of St. Andrew and St. Paul. For example, we no longer use disposable plastic cups or plates. After every coffee and fellowship, as well as every meal, we have a group of people who generously give their time to wash the reusable plates and cups this loving gift of their time reduces our carbon footprint. I find it interesting also that no longer does anyone suggest that we simply purchase disposables without also discussing the environmental impact. This Green Church Committee is having its impact here on us all. It's making inroads. But it may seem like such a small thing, but it's a step forward. Reduce, reuse, repair, refuse, repurpose, rethink. I find it interesting also that environmentalists added the concept of rethinking to this list. As I have preached perhaps too often in the past about the theological concept of repentance, that in Greek, that metanoia, simply means being open-minded, being willing to change your mind, adopting a, a different attitude. The original idea of repent really is to rethink. Reduce, reuse, repair, refuse, repurpose, rethink. Our planet is crying, and the land shows bruises of an abusive relationship. If we insist to continue with our same old, same old, the same old practices, then we become like the baffled audience who first heard Jesus preach the parable of the sower. We will listen, but never understand. We will look, but never perceive. Jesus explained, you will indeed listen, but never understand. You will indeed look, but never perceive. For this people's hearts have grown dull. Their eyes are hard. Their ears no longer hear. So they might not look with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn. But I wait and I would heal them. God longs to heal us. God longs to restore us. Please remember, if we know nothing else, through the creation story, God demonstrates that God is an artist with a very soft spot for flowers and for birds, and that God doesn't make anything to just be used once and thrown away. God saves everything including you and including me. Amen.
God created humanity from dirt, from dirt, to care for dirt. But in our modern world, we have been separated not only from the rich earth of our planet, but we've also become estranged from God's original purpose on our lives, to till the soil and to keep the garden. So today, we are asking each of you to take with you one of the small pots of soil and a couple seeds. They're all packaged up in these little envelopes. And we are asking you to take them home. We're asking you to plant the seeds. There are instructions on the bags that you'll get. This is yes, every one of you, yes. We ask that you then set about the task of nurturing these little seeds. Water them faithfully and tend to them. It is our prayer and our hope that by remembering, by doing, we will all learn to repent and to rethink how we can care for our planet. Now, I am certain that there are some among us for whom the idea of attempting to grow something is utterly terrifying. First, please know that a group of volunteers very carefully and prayerfully made each of these tiny origami seed packages. We prayed over each of these seeds. We prayed over each of you. And we've prayed for your journey as you work to rediscover God's call on your life. Now second, if you happen to be frightened by the undertaking of growing a plant, you have nothing to lose from trying. Remember, we are attempting to give you an opportunity to learn from our plant friends, from the flora and the fauna that share our precious blue ball that we call home. If your seeds never sprout or if they come up and wither, there are still lessons to be learned in that. Pause each day to tend to your little bit of dirt with hope and prayer and see how God might use that time to plant far more valuable seeds within your very being. And if all goes well, in about 80 days, which would be about end of June, beginning of July, if all goes well, you will have beautiful, bright zinnia plants with their gorgeous, colorful blossoms. If you get a little intimidated and need help, I will tell you we have great horticulturalists here at the church who would be happy to talk to you about your plant. The prophet Isaiah expressed thoughts on gardening like this. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, says the Lord. For the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts are not your thoughts, for as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so my word be that goes out from my mouth, it shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish what I wish to purpose it and to succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Oh, my friends, we are blessed by God. Please remember that the planting of seeds is an act of great risk and an act of great hope. Please pray with me. O oh, Creator, who calls forth life. 
May these small pots of soil, these seeds, and our labors here invested yield beautiful blossoms for the nourishing of our spirit. May the work of tending these seeds become acts for us of a living parable and a prayer acted out rather than spoken. As we co-labor with you and your creation, may we find the simple task of watering and nurturing a kind of rest. May these moments be sacred time for reflection with you, our creator. Through our tending of your delightful creatures, renew our own tired hopes, redeem our own wearied imagination. As we cultivate the gentle order of planting, watering, pruning, and protecting, so cultivate and train our wayward hearts, O oh Lord, that have rooted in you, the forms of our lives might spread in winsome witness, maturing to bear good fruit of grace, expressed in acts of compassionate love. Walk with us now, O oh Lord, in the stillness of this simple project, so that when we venture again into the still greater garden of your world, we might be prepared by the long practice of your presence to offer our lives as a true and nourishing provision to all who hunger for mercy and hope and meaning, a true and nurturing provision to all who hunger for you. Amen.
And now, go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to that which is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the Holy Spirit. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.